Worms are fantastic animals. They're incredibly important for life on this planet, and the variety of worms on Earth is truly astonishing. But what are worms? The name is a very broad term that can include an enormous diversity of organisms, from the familiar earthworms to the tiny parasitic worms and the weirdest of deep sea living worms. Worm is, essentially, not actually a scientific name at all. Instead, it's more of a description of a particular body plan. There are many different phyla of animals considered worms, and really the number of different worms in the world just depends on whether you consider an organism worm-shaped. All of the different groupings that you see here have been called worms at one point or another, and this is an incomplete list, as there are even certain larvae of insects that are called worms too, and so it's difficult to really say what a worm is. However, the basic definition would be an animal that's elongate, roughly, though not necessarily tube-shaped, thin and lacking a backbone. But of course there are exceptions to this, for example Anguis fragilis, commonly called the slow worm, which is a lizard and therefore has a vertebral column. Incredibly, despite a lot of the organisms called worms looking quite similar to one another due to their overall body plan, these animals are in fact more distantly related to one another than we are to reptiles, amphibians, or even fish. This is because we're all in the same phylum, Chordata, meaning we share a lot of basic characteristics that can be observed at one time or another during our development. But worms are spread across multiple phyla, meaning they aren't closely related to each other at all, and instead the general worm body plan has evolved over and over again. This must mean, therefore, that the worm shape is simply the best, and really everything should be a worm. Seriously though, worms just work. Like limblessness evolving multiple times within chordates, the fact that this body plan has arisen and lasted for so long in so many different lineages just proves how successful it is, and how good it is for filling the niches that these organisms are adapted for. Of course, this basic worm shape can then be modified over time as the animal changes to suit its environment and lifestyle, leading to the incredible diversity within worms that we can witness today. The three groups of organisms that today many people would consider to be the main, best-known phyla of worms are the annelids, which includes organisms such as earthworms, leeches and bristleworms, the ubiquitous nematodes, including roundworms and hookworms, and the platyhelminthes, including flatworms and tapeworms. Among just these three phyla, there's an unimaginable amount of diversity, but of course there's even more when the other worm groupings are accounted for as well. The name worm did actually used to have a very different meaning in the early days of taxonomy, however, when Carl Linnaeus, the father of modern taxonomy, classified various organisms under vermes, which means worms. Vermes was essentially a collection of all non-arthropod invertebrates, and was separated into five orders, encompassing a huge variety of animals that today are spread across all sorts of phyla, such as the earthworms, slugs, jellyfish, barnacles, clams, hagfish, snails, and corals, just to name a few. But today, these organisms are classified much more distantly from one another, and worm is no longer a very technical term. Other naturalists also use the term vermes, most notably Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, but in his classification he split the vermes up further, as later biologists would continue to do until vermes no longer became a useful grouping, and a view of worm taxonomy as we understand it today arose. Worms of some sort are found just about everywhere on Earth, from the deep sea to the soil and even inside larger animals such as humans, and estimates of the number of species of worm in the world range from over 250,000 to about a million. But of course the number depends greatly on what you count as a worm. And not all of these worms have even been named or described yet, with potentially hundreds of thousands of new species out there waiting to become known to science. As Emily Grasley of The Brain Scoop says, I think everybody should be a worm scientist. <laughs> so, hopefully this video has helped to give you an understanding of just how remarkable worms are, and why the question of what is a worm is a little more misleading than you might initially have thought. I hope you'll join us for the rest of Worm Week as we explore even deeper into the worm world. We've got all sorts of great stuff planned, it should be a lot of fun. There's just so much to learn from these wonderful creatures, and we've only just scratched the surface. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Mayers World, Nicole Bueno, Corey Peterson, Dominic Baffy, Mark Fawn, Alex Hawke, Pasta, and George Vojtek. If you would like to find out more about worms, their history, and the wonderful worms that surround us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.